And what about Nightmare? Well, Nightmare was made by the GPO film unit in 1936, or at least that's the date it's registered. And I am speaking without any um, backup that I can think, but um, I, uh, my own experience working in the 1960s for a documentary unit uh, would back up what I'm about to say. I think somebody had the idea that a film about how the post office coped with the nightmare train uh, was a good idea. And they sent a unit out for two or three days uh, going on the train and filming what the, uh, you will see as the, uh, the way the mail was handled uh, in transit. Uh, and then they looked at it and sort of said, well, yes, uh, that's all right, but we need to see some exteriors. And that when work was a bit slack, people would say, hey, couldn't I go and do some exteriors on Nightmail? And they would go up to probably a pre-chosen uh, location in, say, Yorkshire or, uh, or the border country, uh, and uh, do a bit of filming, which probably didn't, uh, you know, they, 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 they knew when the train would be going past, uh, so it didn't take them all day, and they would spend two or three days. Some days, of course, it would be raining when the train went past, and uh, they, they would have to uh, report that they hadn't been able to take anything uh, useful. And, and the, gradually the footage accumulated, and probably the editor assembled it as it went along, and he might have made some suggestions. Um, it may have been the intention from the beginning, but he may have said, well, we need some uh, shots on the, uh, the London station. And A, isn't it very dramatic when uh, the, uh, the mailbags are swung from the, uh, the, the, the projecting arm into the, uh, the sorting fan? Uh, and, and so they would go out and film. So, as I say, I think it was gradually put together and probably they, 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 they had a lot of other things which uh, didn't uh, finally fit in. And then when they had got uh, some sort of an assembly, I suspect, and I, and I would suggest that this is probably the idea of Basil Wright, who uh, has the production credit on the film that they called in Benjamin Britten and W. H. Orton to provide a soundtrack. Uh, and this is, of course, one of the most widely known and original soundtracks that any film has ever had. Uh, and it has got, of course, a, a very substantial life of its own uh, that very many famous voices have actually uh, recorded Auden's words uh, with groups such as the Nash Ensemble uh, doing the, uh, the, the Britain underscoring. Uh, but it was a very good subject. It was, uh, I'm suggesting, a very typical uh, product of a group of enthusiastic filmmakers I do know that they said when uh, the film was finally ready for uh, for release uh, that they had to sit down and uh, divide up the credits amongst them and that Harry Watt, who subsequently went to Ealing and made uh, the Overlanders and Eureka Stockade for them, uh, was given the directing credit, but I think probably a lot of the cameramen had actually gone out on their own and uh, done work uh, which was used in the film. So it, uh, that is one side of documentary making uh, which I want to contrast with uh, the way that A Diary for Timothy was, was made. Um, it was a collective effort and that uh, the, uh, the the credits as shown uh, should not be taken uh, literally as they should be on on a feature film.